How's it going everyone and welcome to another Counterside video. So, gear. It's probably the least well explained thing in Counterside and I'm sure for a lot of new players it definitely raises a hurdle and a bunch of question marks. I know for myself it wasn't the most intuitive thing to really understand and look into. So, to start off I'm tried researching, tried gathering as much information as I could to try and help just lay a groundwork and explain gear as best I can. So let me preface this with this is not a guide per se as much as an explanation to the gear in the game, the system itself, where you'll be getting gears and what gears you're going for. To just try and help answer as many of those gear related questions as I can. And first things first, I want to start this all off with just a couple quick notes before we really dive into the gear itself. First and foremost, gear is not your first priority. You need to start off with your ship levels and your unit levels. Those provide a huge amount of stats in and of themselves. They are your first priority. They are what you should be focusing on first and foremost. Gear is not an early game thing. Gear is a mid to end game thing. It's not something you're going to be tackling right off the bat. It's something you'll be tackling once everything else is set up. That being said, gear is also a very heavy, heavy RNG cesspool. You're going to be facing RNG a lot with this. So best description I've seen for it is gear is not a sprint. Gear is a marathon. You are going to be working at, at this over a long period of playing. And as you play and do more and progress, you'll slowly be getting the gear built up. Even in those early stages, you're going to slowly be getting the gear built up, really. But it's not something that's going to be immediately there, immediately at the forefront. It'll be something you do later on when you're more in the in-game scenarios. So the foremost thing I want to talk about with gear is, well, what is it? Where, where do you start? And let's start with what's most important. What's most important at the beginning, when you are a new player, is focusing on that set bonus for each individual character. What set bonus works best for that character? And by set bonus, I mean like the four pieces of cooldown reduction or two pieces of attack, two pieces of HP, those kind of things. The set bonus is more important than the substat at the end of the day, and that holds true all the way even into endgame. Work on your set bonus first, then work on your substats. Get the full set, and then you can work on your substats. General rule of thumb for it, right? The main set bonuses you want to look out for are better universally pretty good no matter the character or cooldown reduction or CDR attack speed or the ASPD and HP these three are pretty universal almost all of your tanks want HP as their set bonus and almost all of your DPS are going to want either cooldown reduction or attack speed so if you get a random piece of gear and it has cooldown reduction or attack speed awesome you're doing great I myself have not had a great amount of luck with the cooldown reduction, so you're doing better than me. Now the starting gear itself that you'll kind of be getting is the generic gear you get when you craft gear and some of the generic gear from raids and whatnot and that drops when you do some of the farming stages for gear like the gutter rat and whatnot. That being the Dante gear and the T6 and below raid gear. You can enhance it, like using other pieces of gear to upgrade it as needed. I would not prioritize this gear. This gear is gear that will primarily be, you know, thrown out once you get the good stuff, the actual gear to use, right? Do not, under any means, use your binaries to re-roll the set or substat on this. If you got a good set stat, awesome. If it has a good sub, even better. If not, oh well right don't worry about it it's mostly filler gear until you get your full sets of the you know in-game gear 
again, you can enhance it because, you know, you do want that main stat. You do want uh, some filler gear to fill in those spots. And then if it's, you know, that Dante or whatever gear, that filler gear, and it doesn't have a good set stat, like it has evasion or anti-sniper or something like that, you know, you don't really need for many characters as far as a set bonus goes. You know, use that as fuel to level up other stuff. Now that's all there is really to say about those basic types of gear. Now the types of gear that you are really going to be looking at that really matter and really are your, I guess, in-game gear. First and foremost, there's your maze gear. I'm sure you've heard the name around before if you've looked up gear. It's really the most universal gear out there. Maze gear is primarily gotten in your PvP shop from Danger Close, uh, challenge tokens, and the challenge stage rewards in chapter 2, I believe. And then, as of recording, the currently ongoing End of the Maze event has one set of maze gear in the shop. Highly, highly recommend farming the event and getting that set of gear. The second set of gear that you'll see is Gordius gear. Mostly just gotten from the PvP shop and from some challenge stage rewards as well. In chapter 2 or end of chapter 1, I don't really remember which, but that's where you get it. Gordius is more a defensive tank oriented gear set and that's usually where you'll end up using it and it only comes in armors and accessories and then the last starting off in-game gear I guess you could say or the last main in-game gear is the hummingbird gear which you get from danger close and it is exclusively weapons now I will note that later down the line this hummingbird weapons will be replaced by another piece of in-game gear that I'll get around to but it is your starting off and seeing as that piece of gear isn't in the global version right now it's definitely what you want to be going for I want to say that maze gear Gordius gear and hummingbird gear is all limited there's only so much of it in this game you can get once you've gotten it all from all of those places I've listed for er, for each of them that's it You've gotten it all. There is no more. So that being said, you can't build a set for every character. In some games, for best example I can think of, Seven Deadly Sins Grand Cross. Each character, you know, you get their own unique UR gear. You get gear, you build gear, and you roll gear for each character. You don't do that here. Because there just isn't enough. So what you have to do is you have to build those sets that are generally useful for the most part. And they're common sets that you will move around between characters. Now if you have a waifu or a husbando that has a very very specific want of a set that isn't very universal, that's up to you if you want to fully invest there. That is entirely your decision and go for it. But for the most part, most characters do, in fact, want the same sets of gear. So it works out in that regard that you don't have to make anything specific for every character. You just have to make those sets that you move around. Some other types of gear that I want to bring in that are also worth mentioning is Spectral Gear, which we get in the Shadow Palace, which isn't in Global yet, but we know is coming relatively soon this gear is farmable you farm it in the shadow palace and you craft it in the similar way that you would craft raid gear now spectral gear is a primarily offensive gear with unique set bonuses though because of those unique set bonuses you don't want to reroll those with binaries because you can farm them so just farm for what you need it is tedious it takes time but that's gear overall and it is gear for specific characters to really amp up their power so not used you know universally but still really good gear that's some characters do want or is an option for some characters 
And then there's unique gear, which is the gear you get at the end of counter cases. So if you go into your operations and then you just go all the way to the bottom down to counter case, you go to your normal counter cases, and for example, I will click on Shiyun. Scroll down, it's the one you get in their very final one. This T6 gear, it's unique for him. Only Ju Shiyun can use it. And this is how you get it. For his, it's a weapon. Some characters is an accessory. Some is an armor. You get it there, and there it is. That's all there is to it. Can't reroll the first stat. It's usually locked to something that is generally useful for the character. But if it's what that character wants to use or not in place of a maze gear or a gorgeous gear or whatever... Well, look at an, an analysis for each character and see how useful their actual unique gear is. Some people like to use the unique gear simply because the character has a unique gear, and that's completely okay. Now, all of these gears I've listed, Maze, Gordius, Hummingbird, Spectral, and their unique gear all start off as T6 gear. Eventually, you're able to upgrade these T6 gear into T7 gear with Relic Dungeon material and credits. Of course, we don't have the Relic Dungeon just yet in Global, but we will be getting it soon. Relatively. But before you upgrade, which requires you to enhance a piece of gear all the way up to plus 10, which is a lot. Very few people on Global right now, aside from some whales, or, you know, maybe some non-whales too, that probably don't have many plus 10 pieces of gear. But you have to get all the way to plus 10, and then you can upgrade them into T7. I will warn and caution you before you reroll or before you upgrade to T7, reroll the set bonus and the stat uh, substat bonus and upgrades before doing the T7 enhancement. Do that because the material requirements will increase once you make them T7. So get it out of the way while it's cheaper to save yourself some resources. And speaking of T7 gear, there are a few pieces of T7 gear that do fill in that in-game gear. The first set, or the first two sets, are your raid gear. Primarily, what we have in Global right now is the Breacher raid gear, which is the more niche of the two raid gears. There are a handful of characters that use them, but not a lot, because it focuses primarily towards crit damage. The second set of raid gear, when we get our second raid boss, which, if you've been playing, you remember we got the little bug where that boss showed up a little earlier than he should have, not too long ago. That's the inhibitor raid and inhibitor gear. This is the weapon that will replace your hummingbird weapons down the line, and is generally a really good piece of T7 gear. So, well worth farming those raids when they do become available, and well, doable. There's also the regular Relic Dungeon gear, which is the Swift Relic gear. A handful of characters can make use of it. How universally usable it is, uh, I guess, is a character-by-character -character basis. It doesn't usually fall into that generic good-for-everyone slot, but, you know, like unique gear, there are some characters that can probably make use of it. Take it by a character by character basis when it comes to the Swift Relic and the Breacher Relic gear. The Inhibitor one is the big one of the three base T7 gears that you can get. And as I've been speaking about what gear is for who or what gear set is for who, well, obviously I can't break it all down in one video. You know, I can't tell you every character and what set works for them. Thankfully, our good friends over at Praedwin do have a handy cheat sheet. It is a full list of characters, alphabetical, and what gear they want for PvE and PvP. And I will let you know that generally, building PvP still gets you covered in PvE. You'll notice, for the most part, the gear is the same, because the character still plays mostly the same. Of course, in some instances, some characters have a little bit more they can do in PvE because they don't need as much, like, defensive-oriented stats, but... That's up to you if you want to even care about the PvP or just focus on the PvE. 
But there is a handy cheat sheet that tells you what every character wants in every year. And if you scroll through this cheat sheet, you'll be, you'll realize very quickly, yeah, there there are similarities in gears. There's a lot that people want that's the same, so it's easy to move around. So at this point, I've talked about re-rolling stuff a handful of times. So I want to talk about the binaries and what they are, what they're for, etc. and so forth. So if you're purple, tuning binaries. There's a handful of ways to get them, clearly. These are for re-rolling your substats. That's re-rolling them and enhancing them. And I, and I will show in just a moment what I mean by that. And then there's your set binaries. And your set binaries, instead of just the, the gold ones, not the tuning binaries, the set binaries. Let me word that properly. Set binaries, by the name, are for re-rolling the set stat, the set bonus. Both of these binaries are limited for a free-to-play player. There's only so much of this resource you can get. There is a supply mission that you can do between both of them, a total of six times that drops some every day. Highly recommend farming that every day. Gold set binaries are far, far, far fewer. So be very, very careful with these resources. Do not use them haphazardly. Only use them on the game that is in-game viable, on the gear that is in-game viable gear. If you're not sure about using them, don't use them. Wait. Look into it. Wait and see if this is what you need, if what might be better, if there's a character you want to invest on more. Just be careful with it because it is limited and you don't want to use it haphazardly. You want to use it for your in-game gear to make sure it's all good, all viable for as many characters as possible generally. And when you do use these and you do start re-rolling the set stat and the substat and all of these things, start with your weapon and then go down. Just a general rule of thumb. Just a piece of advice. Now, light spenders that play the game, you should probably prioritize the several different, like, quartz packs that let you get these, or admin coin packs, or, you know, just straight up packs you can buy for these, because there are limited in the game itself, and you need a lot of them generally, because it's all RNG. For even the biggest spenders, the biggest whales, doesn't matter how much money you spend, you can still get boned by RNG. I'm going to leave my feelings for that aside. That is where light spenders should try and focus. And obviously whales are getting every, like the mega whales are getting everything. So for free to play players, be careful. Light spenders focus for them. Now I'm going to show you a little bit of this re-rolling process. So if we go over here to enhance and tune, I'm going to show you a piece of gear I have here. This is my T7, or T7, T6, Maze Hands. As you can see, CDR is my set bonus. As you can see, I have Skill Haste rolled on my second piece here. Both of them maxed. I have no desire to change the options. There we go. Now, to kind of explain, let me find a generic piece of gear here. Alright, so we'll use this... Uh, actually, here, here you go. Let's use these Dante Hands. So, when you change options for a piece of gear, for a lot of your in-game gears, this first set is locked or limited. You go to this option list, you can see what each option has available. And in most situations, when there's a choice like between crit or crit damage, like and it's a percent, go for the percent, don't go for the flat numbers. So you change the gear here, and then you can increase it up to its max stat here. That's how that works. That's base. I will be showing this in just a second. I'm going to show it now. I'm going to go to... Let me find the piece here. Here it is. Okay. So for this piece, I've already got skill haste rolled. That's its base one that's set. 
I need cooldown reduction for the set. The option list, you see all your options. There's a lot of them I'm trying to get cooldown reduction. I have six shots. It takes ten. Let's see if I can get it. No. Didn't get it. HP, it's nice, but not what I'm looking for. Nope. Attack speed, also nice. Not what I'm looking for. I will confirm, because it is better than my crit damage. So maybe if I get another Maze Crown before rolling this, that is cooldown reduction, I can take this attack speed piece and move it over to somebody else. One more shot. No. We don't want it. Go over, leave anyways. Okay. This is now an attack speed piece. Okay. And as for a substat, I think I have one here that still needs its substat increased. Oh, maybe I don't. Here it is. So, it's already rolled for skill haste, which is the main thing you want majority of the time. So, if we go here and you look, it's all maxed, right? So, we'll go here, maxed. I can upgrade the anti-ground damage. I want the skill haste first. So, let's go here to, no, sorry, this one. Here, and we'll precision. And you just go until you get it up. Now it does, you see the percent chance, tells you how full it is. Boom, maxed it. Skill haste, 10%. We did it. If you look at the Gordius gear, find an example here. We'll change the option here for this one. So you can look at the option list. You have range damage resist, melee damage resist, or straight damage resist. And you can look at the substats, what they each need. Then defense, crit, evasion, hit, etc. and so forth. Anti-ground damage is the generally better option. So we're going to try and change it. Anti-ground damage right there. Fantastic. We got it. And then you start enhancing it up. That's how it works. That's the way you generally reroll and how you tune your gear. You do this the same for, you know, every piece of gear, what everybody wants, etc. and so forth. That's how it works. So, this brings us to the next thing I want to talk about. What gear sets do you get? Well, your first priority, it, some people will tell you you should focus on your tank sets. Two full sets of a Hummingbird weapon, Maze Armor, and Gordius Accessories. Two sets of these, both of them double HP on the set bonus. This is almost always what your tanks want, almost always what your tank character, your defender characters want, so it's very universal to swap around. Obviously, you, you go for counters first. It is called counter side. Vast majority of the characters are counters. This holds true for any of the sets in the game. I mean, but of course, if you have this waifu that you adore and get in is why you play the game or a mech and they're a mech or a soldier, I mean, go for it if that's what you want to do. I'm not going to tell you not to. But you are limiting your usefulness for that set of armor, of course. Doing your counters first lets you cover the vast majority. And then you can move on to the other like smaller niche things. But most people will tell you to do the tank set. I did a full maze cooldown reduction set first because it is almost universally wanted for your DPS, for your supports, your debuffers. It's just so many characters in the game want a full maze cooldown reduction set, skill haste substat set of gear. So that's what I worked on first. And yeah, a lot of those characters that want that are characters that I quite like. So that was my first choice. And as you saw, I have a set of the Hummingbird Maze Gordius, though it's not all been re-rolled. I do have it there to work on next. I will be working on the tank defender HP plus HP set next. I also will very quickly touch upon 
one little thing. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. And that's this little tiny thing called latent abilities. Now, if you look at a T7 piece of gear, you see here it has a little thing at the top. Latent ability must be unlocked. Now, this only exists on base T7 gear. So, natural T7 gear. So, your raid relic gear. There is no re-rolling a latent ability. Once it's unlocked... It's unlocked, you've got what you got. It is entirely RNG. And for that reason, Layton is a super end game grind. Something you work on way later. Once you get to plus two enhance, you can unlock your first Layton socket there. Now I do have one piece of Layton gear at T7. Plus two, oh there it is. Crit damage resist. Not the worst, it's all right. Whatever you unlock in this plus two enhance is what you will get at the plus five and plus seven enhance levels. So whatever you get here is what you get here and here. They will be the same. Because of this RNG, you know, how you want to handle latents is entirely up to you. Enhance the seven T7 gear to plus two to see if you get a good latent before you start rerolling stuff. Or just start re-rolling and setting up the gear and just hope you get a good latent. That's up to you. I would think the best thing is get a piece of gear to plus two to see if you get a good latent before doing the rest of it. And then if you don't, you can use it as fodder. You can use it as filler gear. It's entirely up to you. I'm not going to go into the whole hullabaloo of latents here, but... Just know it's very in-game, very RNG, very grind-heavy. And not something you really need, probably need to be worrying about anytime soon if you're watching this video. <laughs> so, but it is there, and there are guides, and I will leave some of those in the description below so that you can check those out if you are there. With all of that, that's, that's the video. That's gear that's trying to explain every basic concept of gear that's worth knowing i'm sorry this came is coming out so late i know i've been mentioning it for a while been a bit busy i've been trying to compile and get my info as accurate as possible to kind of help answer those questions as best i could to kind of you know help as many people as i can with this and I hope it helped. I hope this answered any questions you may have had or cleared anything up for you that was just confusing. I know when I got into this game and I saw how the gear worked, I I was afraid. I was just like, this is going to be so annoying. And yes, it took me a little bit of time to wrap my head around it because it was a little all over the place. And the game isn't very clear about it. But I think I understand it for the most part now. So hopefully this helps if you still have questions if things you know still aren't answered for you i'm gonna leave in the description all the guides and info i referenced myself for this video and you can check those out and maybe they'll help you i'll also leave the cheat sheet for pridwin with all of the gear for every character in the description as well but if you know you've looked through these guides you still don't have questions or you still don't understand you still have questions I encourage you, follow me on Twitter, see when I'm going live, come check my, out my Twitch stream and ask me there. It doesn't matter if I'm playing Counterside or not. Come on in, ask a question. I'll, I'll do the best I can to answer. I really hope this helps. I really hope, you know, you all can wrap your head around it and enjoy it. An entire system being based on RNG like this with no pity, with complete randomness, spending, you know, tons of resources... It's annoying, and it's not great design, but hopefully it's not too much of a headache for any of you, and you don't have to pull your hair out trying to figure it out or trying to get good gear. So, take solace in the fact that even whales can get screwed by RNG. No matter how much money they spend, they can still get screwed by RNG. 
so you have a chance. Even against whales. All that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. I really do hope this helped. And if it did, please hit that like button. Consider subscribing, checking out the rest of the videos I have on the channel. And maybe even follow me over on Twitter to see when I'm live on Twitch just to come hang out. We we'll greatly appreciate all of that. Again, I hope this helped. Share it with your friends if they want to, you know, get some extra pointers here and there as well. And I will see you all in the next one. Peace.